Welcome back to the program. Well, inland from Dunsandal, the little village of Dunsandal, there's a malting plant, which basically started up because the guy was interested and it sort of just quietly grew. I suppose it's just something that I've always sort of wanted to do. I had a bit of a hankering for when I, when I was a kid. And, and um, I finally got the opportunity to um, have a bit of a crack at it. And yeah, so it's something, it was about 10 years ago. And, Started off as a hobby. Yeah, well, I sort of, sort of did really. I guess we wanted to value add and wanted to look for other options, and we wanted to be a bit more profitable with what we were doing and the way things were going. It was, you know, it wasn't wasn't a lot of money in uh, the traditional sort of mixed cropping farming. So yeah, I was just looking for other options and something that always sort of interests me. I used to go to Heathcote there with my father and. You see the maltings there, and I used to, yeah, it's, so I suppose it's sort of come from that, really. And since then, it's quite sizable. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's growing, that's for sure. And, um, you know, it's, it's just as long as we can uh, grow it sustainably, I guess. Um, our timing's been pretty good uh, with, the, uh, with the advent of all the craft uh, breweries up and down the country now. So, you know, we've, probably timing has been perfect, really. Walk me through the process. Uh, well, obviously we grow the barley, um, although we've got the stage now where we are um, contracting growers. Um, so yeah, well once the, we've grown the product, we bring it in, we store it here. Um, and basically there's three steps to the moulding process. There's the steeping, the germination and, and the kilning. Uh, and uh, so just the steeping side of it, we're just getting the moisture level up in the grain so that it'll germinate and then obviously to the germination stage which takes about uh, anywhere between uh, four to six days where we're trying to create uh, enzymes in the barley so that they'll break down the uh, starches and uh, turn them into sugars for the brewer. And once we get the modifications to the right level then uh, we start to dry the, the product out in the kilns uh, and that's where we will develop the colour and, and the flavour in the malt. And then of course also we've got the, the new roaster now, so we're making uh, specialty malts, which is uh, crystal malts and roasted products. And that again is a whole uh, different process again. So You mentioned two there, is there two different systems or what? Yeah, well obviously uh, there's the what we call the base malts, which are made through the uh, germination kiln boxes. And then of course we've got the roasted malts, which are made in the, in the roaster. So it's like a, a giant coffee roaster. Uh, it's just a wee bit more sophisticated than that, of course, and uh, quite a lot bigger. I notice a lot of it's computerised. Yeah, it's uh, just the way things are nowadays. We've got to have uh, got a hands-on everything, uh, control-wise. Um, the cust customer is pretty fussy, so we can't afford to send out a product there that varies too much. Um, consistency is really, really crucial for the brewer. Uh, they need to be confident in the product. And the only way that we can be competitive is, is on quality and uh, in service. So we have to make sure we've got a world-class product coming out of here, and um, we make, we've got to make sure we've got all the technology to do it. You've got quite a range of customers. Do they all want something specific for themselves? Uh, yes, there there is um, quite a, a large number of customers that we deal with. Uh, some, some customers will specify um, a certain specification in their malt, so we have to make sure that we can hit that specification for them, and it once again has to be consistent. And what happens, you've got a lab to make sure, but what happens if you're slightly off? Well, we're not too bad uh, with our consistency, because the, the fact is that we're able to control the most important part of the malt, and that's the barley going in. So. We know exactly which paddocks um, different lines have come from. Um, we can do um, micro mouldings of lines at the start of the season and we get a bit of a feel handle on how they're going to perform in the germination. Um, and so we know exactly where those lines are and it does make it a lot easier to keep things consistent. And looking at the plant, a lot of it's been home built and a lot of it's been home modified. Yeah, um, we've sort of had to start from scratch, it's not something that um, it's not like like uh, a dairy conversion where there's sort of like there's a blueprint and you know you can ring up an engineer and uh, ask them to build a dairy shed. Uh, Malting's a pretty one-off sort of a thing, so we've sort of had to uh, design and build that all ourselves. Um, 
and also uh, cash flow has been a major constraint. Um, obviously, we have to we've had to build our own market up from scratch. Um, so, yeah, so we've sort of had to really budget things along, and by doing a lot of those sort of builds ourselves, you know, it's allowed us to, to get off the ground. But you've got clients from Invercargill to Auckland. I mean, there's a fair, fair bit of phoning being done by somebody. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, it is, it's a huge sort of undertaking, really, when, when you look back at it and, and, and that. But, um, look, we're, it's a team, a real team effort here. And, and without my wife, Gabby, she's an absolute inspiration, really. Um, you know, and to think 10 years ago she, she could hardly speak any English, I think it's, it's quite incredible, really. Um, and she, you know, she is a great asset to the business, and um, you know, she, she's now taking over from all the marketing side of it, and just sort of leave me to do the nuts and bolts, which has taken a huge weight off my shoulders. Um, was you exporting as well? Yeah, now we're into Australia, which is a bit of a coup, really. Um, it's nice you're sending it back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and we're finding that we're getting, um, yeah, we're getting real, real good success over there. But of course that brings up another problem is making sure we've got the um, the production side that we can maintain those markets over there. So you know we've got to make sure we control things pretty carefully. Um, we don't want it getting out of, out of hand too much. What makes a good malting barley or wheat? Okay, well obviously you want clean uh, barley with really good germination. So we want germination up around that 98 minimum um, and lovely and clean and plump. Um, obviously nitrogen does have a, uh, is important as well. We try and aim for around about a 1.4 to about 1.7 nitrogen. So they are really the key things of it, but yeah, nice and clean and plump with a good germination. Are there any varieties that stand out? Uh, yes, well obviously there's, uh, there's feed varieties and, and there's malting varieties and um, what uh, differentiates the difference is uh, just the enzyme makeup of those varieties. Uh, but what you'll find here in New Zealand is just about all uh, barley varieties that have come into the country here actually were uh, initially bred as malting varieties, although they're probably not grown as malting varieties. Um, so most of the barleys here will malt, um, but it just depends really on what sort of specific uh, qualities that the end customer wants, so that'll dictate which uh, variety we end up choosing. And so where to from here? The, obviously the plant breeders are going to keep working on your behalf. Yeah, well, what we're finding is that uh, the, 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 breed, the malting varieties that have been bred in the UK have really sort of showed up pretty well here, so we're sort of able to ride off the back of that. And as far as your markets are concerned, you're just going to let Gabby go mad and get, get more customers. No, well, that's yes, right, but like I said, we're, you know, we've got to make sure we can uh, keep the production up to it. We don't want to... Um, <laughs> to a stage where we can't supply what we promise. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, we have to grow it sustainably. Any room for expansion? Because you, you've, you've sort of blown out the walls already a couple of times. Yeah, well, that's right. We uh, weren't expecting to uh, to get grow this fast, but you know, I suppose still a bit of room left in the paddock there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the lab, because there's quite a few different tests that you do need to do, though. Yeah. Um, that's right. Uh, the lab's the most critical part to uh, the operation really. We need to make sure we keep uh, a very consistent product that's coming out the other end. So we're testing for about uh, 15 different uh, attributes of the malt, uh, just basics such as a moisture right through to testing for the likes of beta gluten, uh, your soluble nitrogens, your free aminos and diastatic powers and all those sorts of things. So yeah, it is very, very important so that we know what track we're on. You've come a long way from the, the malter just chewing a bit of grain and seeing what it tasted like. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I mean, obviously there's a fair bit of that goes on as well. I mean, it's uh, it's one of those things where, you know, it's experience is, is uh, quite crucial to uh, the finished product as well, such as measuring or analysing your different flavour profiles and things like that. So those sort of things can't really be tested in the lab, so you do need a wee bit of that as well seems to be a very wide range of malts needed now because of the varieties of beer. Yeah, that's right. With the craft uh, brewing scene taken off the way it has, um, there's a lot of people going back to more of the traditional types of brewing. 
uh, which means that uh, they, they want to be able to use uh, just the, the basic ingredients for making beer rather than adding a lot of these ag adjuvants. So, um, yeah, so it certainly is coming back into its own now with the roasted products. It's, uh, yeah, it's really taken off. So out of a range of, say, seven or eight different styles of beer, you start with the same, the same malt? Or sorry, the same barley? Yeah, well, well basically the, the brewer will use a base malt uh, in, in his mash, uh, which will either be a pilsner or, or an ale malt. And then he'll add anywhere up to um, 10 to 20 percent of, of what we call the specialty malts or coloured malts uh, to colour or flavour up the beers. That's quite intricate. Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, you, you've sort of got to try and uh, keep up with the play with uh, the customers that are always trying to come out with new types of beers and, and they're always looking for, for a new type of malt. So we're always trying to, uh, you know, find something new and um, our next product out is actually uh, a manuscript.